Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, my name is Gabby and today I'm back with a massive perfume haul I have in here 14 perfumes uh, We've got some new releases, we got most of them are new releases We got some brands that are not that well known and you definitely need to know more about them And yeah, 14 perfumes, I'm gonna try to make this video as quick as possible uh, But I would say this time everything was like perfect like no fails nothing like that um i'm super happy with everything that i got and yeah before we start if you like this video don't forget to pick thumbs up subscribe to my channel and now let's jump in i'm gonna start this video with a brand new release from burberry and that is burberry her elixir um i already kind of talked about this perfume and i said that i like it but i will not pay again how much i paid that is the bottle i got just a 30 ml and this uh, 30 ml i got from the official website because right now you can't find it anywhere in the uk where you can actually test it and it was 63 pounds yes that's a lot of money i like the notes i do really enjoy the original burberry hair i knew that people are gonna start asking me to try it so i said why not i'm just gonna buy it for the sake of youtube i do like it but normally you know just like give it another like two months until it's like 20 30 percent off because i paid a lot for what this is anyway let's talk about the notes the new burberry her elixir we have strawberry blackberry jasmine amber vanilla and sandalwood when i looked obviously at the bottle when i saw the, the bottle i thought mm, this is gonna be like super extra creamy like a creamy milkshake a creamy strawberry milkshake and it is and not really i'm gonna spray them like side by side because i feel like if you have the original you generally don't need this one right now maybe yes you're gonna like it more maybe you're gonna like it less but i don't feel like you need this right now because in the air they're very similar this is the new one this is uh, the original basically the original is this like every baccarat rouge type of like vibe with lots of um strawberries kind of this like strawberry milkshake the elixir one is definitely creamier it doesn't have that airiness but it's not creamy as like a milkshake it's just creamy but not like super super creamy and then i'm definitely getting in the dry and i'm getting some jasmine as well like a creamy jasmine again side by side they're very similar like it's kind of the same thing i know people are complaining about the original performance that it doesn't last it doesn't project i never ever ever had any issues with this one and everyone right now is saying that this is like beast mode might be on someone else for me they generally perform kind of the same to be like super honest with you I feel like it's just my nose, but after a couple of hours, I can't smell this one on um, on myself. Probably it's just my nose. With the original, I'm still able after a few hours to smell it. Maybe I'm getting like nose, nose blind, something like that. It's a very nice fragrance. Nevertheless, it's a very nice fragrance. I do like it. Is it worth like the 120 or whatever it is, the 100 ml? I don't think so. Like right now, I generally don't think so. I feel like you can stick with the original. Just wait until the elixir is going on sale or something like that because like generally in the air when obviously i wear it the whole day and when i was wearing it i couldn't like i couldn't tell that i'm wearing a different fragrance on the skin when you smell it like compare them side by side um and you do like with like both of them you can definitely tell that this one it's more every this one is creamier but in the air they generally smell very very similar so yeah it's a very nice one but i would just say wait until it goes um on sale so the first fragrance i'm having here is from burberry and this one is burberry her elixir all right let's talk about a gourmand a gourmand that um when you're looking at the notes you don't really think it's going to be that gourmand but in reality it is and a fragrance that i didn't know that i needed in my life because i got a sample like ages ago when i got mula mula sample of mula mula and i didn't really like it like i was like mm, it's cute but I'm telling you my samples that i got were just wrong like they didn't smell like the original fragrance they weren't bought from the um 
official website i got them from from like sample websites and it's not just this one like i have other samples that don't smell the same as the actual perfume i'm talking about the chronic from Byron. you know that i have mula mula and how much i love mula mula and with that, that one obviously the bottle look different the packaging and people were kind of complaining about the packaging including myself that it's not that vava boom for what you're paying they change the packaging they change the bottle and i'm so happy like they listen they, they generally listen people are saying hey this is not the most luxurious packaging they listen now they change the packaging the bottle is absolutely beautiful when i saw the new bottles um online i was like this is cute but in, no in reality it's absolutely stunning it's it feels expensive it looks expensive it's stunning now the chronic when you're looking at the notes again with mula mula you know how much i rave about, about that fragrance i bought that one and i was just like in love in love i adore the fragrance and other people were in love with the chronic but again my sample wasn't that wow so when i got this one i was like oh my god Greta because obviously she she makes me do some damages okay and she makes me want more perfumes raved about this perfume and I was like okay I need to try this I need to see what she's smelling that I didn't smell in my sample so I contacted them and I got a, a, um, a bottle of the chronic telling you my, my sample was bad like it, it was bad because this this does not smell like my sample and also the notes. The notes are cinnamon, pepper, amber, leather, patchouli, sandalwood, and white musk. When you look, when you see like those notes, you're gonna think it's, it's like super dark, and but it's not. I'm getting the amber, okay, but it's a very sweet amber. It's almost gourmand, and it has almost this like bubble gum, like cotton candy vibe. It's super sweet. It's nothing spicy, nothing leathery. Besides that amber and maybe just a hint of cinnamon. This is such an amazing gourmand. Like, no, it's not leather, it's not patchouli. I know I don't know how they did it. Okay, I don't know how they mix all of these notes and they created this because this smells absolutely delicious. It's very long lasting. It does project. I wore it the other day and I got compliments. It smells like, like an ambery bubblegum, ambery um, cotton candy, like something like that. It's beautiful, it's stunning, and I feel like especially for this period of time, for the fall time, this is going to be stunning. Because it's not like full on gourmand, like it doesn't smell like food, but it's still super sweet and it, that, uh, uh, it, it's stunning. It's definitely like a bubblegummy amber, this is what I'm getting. Beautiful scent, and it has... The sillage, it has the projection, it has all of that. The bottle is beautiful. Super happy with the new packaging. I never disliked the, the first packaging, the original one, but just like, I mean, the bottle. Packaging was eh, okay. -ish. But right now, the, like everything is done to perfection. The packaging is beautiful, the bottle is beautiful, and the scent is just amazing. So, the chronic from Byron. All right, let's move on to a fragrance that I already hold in another video, but I had just the Tenemel, and right now I bought, I use like that Tenemel immediately, and I got the full bottle. I'm talking about Mas Milano Madeleine. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go into like too much details because I already talked about this one. This is the bottle. I like it. I'm not sure about it, okay? I'm not sure. Like, I kind of like it, I kind of don't. I'm not the biggest fan of like frosted glass. I kind of like it in the same time. I don't know. It's a different type of bottle, okay? It's original. Madeleine has, um, it's supposed to be like, it's like almond perfume. People are saying it's almond. I would say it's peanuts. It has some whipped cream, it has some chestnut, it has some tuberose, it has some milk, it has vanilla, it has other notes, but it's like the main ones. It's super sweet peanuts. This is what I'm getting. Getting, Like you put some vanilla, you put some milk and then you add some peanuts and then you're getting this. Super authentic peanut smell. I'm someone that really likes peanuts, like I, I really like eating them. Obviously it's not salted, like it doesn't have any salt, not salted peanuts or paprika peanuts or anything like that. 
but this wasn't getting it's, it's something milking there going on okay but you're getting that you know how peanuts have that like not powdery but almost like powdery feel like does it make sense like that i don't know residue that you can smell it smells like that it generally smells like that i love it i already use a cinnamon poster so obviously i love it that's why i bought another one yeah madeleine from uh, musk milano super good peanuts fragrance it's not almond in my opinion it's peanuts peanuts with vanilla and some milk all right because we talked about um a fragrance that smells like peanuts i have another one that smells like peanut butter we have from navitus divine aphrodisiac that is just like the standard Navitus packaging and then that is the bottle obviously you have the carving here this one and the next two perfumes they, uh, all of them they were created by uh, Darian he, his YouTube channel is a uh, bowtie fragrance guy probably you know him he created Navitus in the past but now he came up with three new releases Divine Aphrodisia when I saw the notes when I saw that like, peanut butter cold, I was like, this is gonna be amazing. And then I received the bottle. By the way, I asked the um, Navitus team if I can get them because I really want to try them like ASAP. And they said, yes. So I'm telling you, I received them both. It's one that I'm not the biggest fan, but the other ones I really like. Because obviously that will not. So makes sense for me to like them. Okay, Divine Aphrodisiac. Let me tell you about the notes first. I love the fact that you're having the notes in here. You have Indian sesame, bitter almond, uh, cinnamon, you have some Moroccan iris butter, you have some peanut butter cord, you have praline, you have coffee, you have vetiver, you have lots of things, okay? Immediately when you spray it, you can smell the sesame. It's for me the exact same type of sesame that it was used in the embrace from again from Navitus. A fragrance that I really really like. Not really getting like the cinnamon. Oh like but I'm getting a bit of coffee and I'm definitely getting that peanut butter a quart. Now when I first sprayed it um I just felt that it's it's not sweet enough. Like I was like okay it's not really that gourmet but it is it is it's getting sweeter and again when you first spray it you're getting that sesame that's very strong and then it generally starts to smell like peanut butter if you smell peanut butter you know that it's not that sweet like, when you think about it you're like oh my god it's so sweet but in reality it's not that sickling sweet same story with anno strawberry you think about strawberries and you think that they're super super sweet but you can actually like, taste them they're not that sweet same story with this one i love it now I was like, ah, I kind of like it, but after I wore it once, I love it. It's super creamy. Now, comparing it to Madeleine, because they're similar. Both of them, they have that like, peanut cord. This one definitely feels like peanut butter. It's not as sweet, and it's smoother, and it's very creamy. It generally has a texture of the peanut butter. It's very creamy. When the other one, it has that powderiness that like like i said the, the peanuts residue you can smell that and can be a bit annoying to the nose not gonna lie this one is very smooth like very smooth it doesn't change a lot okay which i really don't mind i like sometimes when the fragrance stays the same especially if i like the opening i would just say opening is very strong on the sesame and then in the dry down actually when it starts to dry down you start to get that peanut butter and then it's just getting sweeter and sweeter but not to the point where it's like very sweet i do believe this one can be unisex um if you like if you, you're not afraid of like a gourmand you it definitely can be unisex it's not screaming oh it's a feminine perfume it's not screaming that you know i like the fact that it's not mixed with um like i don't know floral notes does it have any floral notes? No, it doesn't. I like the fact that it's not mixed with floral notes, so it's just a gourmand. It's just in that territory, you know? It has obviously the praline, it has the coffee, it has um, the peanut butter. I'm actually getting a bit of coffee as well, but it's just like a supporting note. It's nothing, it's not like a coffee fragrance, it's just a supporting note. 
overall, like I said, when I first tested it, I was a bit like, doesn't feel sweet enough. But then when I wore it, I was like, it's the best thing. It's so good that it's not that sweet as I wanted it to be. Because if it was sweeter than it is, it would be too much. It would be cooing. It would be like just too much. Because it's a very complex and strong fragrance. Overall, I do really like this one. Uh, Divine Aphrodisiac. And But the next one, the next one that I have, I actually like. It was love at first sniff, okay? Like if I really, really like this one, the other one I absolutely love. And I'm talking about... Wait, I have way too many bottles in here. Sartoria Nui. I featured this one in another video. And same collaboration, okay? That is the bottle. I love the color of the bottle. Like, I just love this bottle. Probably my favorite Navitus bottle so far. Let me just get the card. I generally have way too many things in here. And this table, it's not the biggest one. Sartoria Nui. Again, I looked at the notes and I was like, not sure if I'm going to like it because if it looks, it can be quite masculine. No. We have note. Bergamot, lavender, clary sage, orange blossom, tonka bean, um, cedarwood, sandalwood, vanilla, and musk. I was like, okay, that tonka bean sounds good. That sandalwood sounds good. But not sure about the lavender. Let me tell you. When you first spray it, is this like almost powdery sweet lavender and then in the background in the background you can smell a bit of that bergamot and then when it starts to dry down the tonka bean the tonka bean in this perfume it's absolutely stunning i don't really like um fev from dior i don't really like that type of tonka bean I like Tonka and PVR from Girla. This is that type of Tonka bean. Not dupes by any means, nothing like that. I'm just saying it's that type of Tonka bean. I just love it. The, the lavender is still there, but it's not as strong as in the opening, okay? And you're getting this beautiful Tonka bean with vanilla, but mostly Tonka. Amazing. Amazing. It, it has this... <sighs> Like the powderiness in it, it's not like makeup powder, it's more like a dust, like fairy dust. Like it generally smells like tonka bean with some lavender fairy dust. I know it makes no sense, but this is what I'm getting. I love it. Like I sprayed it, I was like, okay, this is nice because I smelled the opening. And then when it got to that right down, I was like, oh my God, I absolutely love it. This is probably my like top three Navitus perfumes right now. Beautiful, beautiful scent. Mm, unisex leaning more feminine i would say okay so definitely my favorite one from uh, the collaboration the collaboration with bowtie fragrance guy is this one sartorial nui absolutely beautiful and then the last one the one that is not for me oh the bonheur i knew okay when i saw the bottle when i saw the notes that probably i'm not gonna be the biggest fan um because it's quite masculine this is the bottle like you can tell it's going to be a freshie you can tell it's going to be a bit more masculine now i got this one and i tested on my skin i was like it's nice but i'm not gonna wear it like i'm not gonna wear it i know for a fact and i tested on my boyfriend he actually has viva more from navitus he doesn't really like niche okay like he, he likes his sauvage okay he likes sauvage he likes uh the scent from Hugo Boss, he likes things like that. And he, he got Viva more and he's obsessed with that fragrance and I love it on him, like it's delicious, it's amazing, that pi pineapple is just everything. And then I put this one on him and he really actually, like he actually really liked this one. Even though, like I said, like he doesn't really like niche, I know it's like, oh, how he cannot like, like niche? His nose is not the best, let's just say, sometimes. Like, he picks up everything that's super dark when it comes to, like, amber or, like, wood or things like that. He just doesn't like them. Or with freshies when something is too um, artistic. He doesn't like that. With this one, he was like, oh, I actually really like this one. This one has, it's, it's masculine, in my opinion. A bergamot, pink pepper, petit grain, uh, jasmine, tuberose, orange blossom, lavender, um, ambroxan, uh, 
benzoin, musk, oak moss, it has a lot. I don't really know exactly what like I'm smelling. I'm definitely getting the bergamot, the pink pepper, petit grain because it has something green as well. But I'm not really getting like the jasmine, the tuberose. Like this is where I thought maybe it's gonna get a bit more feminine. It's not, it stays quite masculine. So that's why I'm saying this is not for me. If you're a guy, if you're watching this channel, check this one out because on a guy, this is actually very, very nice. It's not just like a plain um, citrusy perfume. You can smell the lavender. You can smell some lavender. And you can smell that petit grain. It has something green. It has something more going on. I do like it, but again, not for myself, but the other two, oh yeah, like I'm gonna wear the other two. And the last one that I already made a video, but I'm just gonna like mention it again. I generally have way too many boxes in here. Venom of Love in collaboration with uh, Paulina Schar. I made a dedicated video for this fragrance. I don't know where to put all of these boxes. That is, oh, the bottle, matte black, and this is obviously a cherry fragrance if you probably already know because everyone is talking about this fragrance for all of the good reasons <sighs> opens up with dark cherry covered in chocolate it has a bit of an oriental vibe like it's, it has that like middle eastern like princess like i really like it i really like it okay and then the cherry is sweet, it's syrupy, it's a bit dark as well. In the dry down, you start to get some almond as well. Very, very nice. Especially for a cherry fragrance, this thing lasts, this thing projects, this thing like is doing it, okay? It's not lost cherry, it's not the new Kiali. It's, it's its own thing and it does last and it does project. And I'm super happy with this, especially again for fall and winter. This is going to be stunning. So the last fragrance from Nabitus that we have in here is Venom of Love from um, Nabitus, obviously, in collaboration with Paulina Shar. Right, let's move on to um, other perfumes, not that gourmand anymore, okay? Let's move on from gourmand for a little bit. We have, I got two perfumes from Diptyque. I went to the Diptyque boutique, Diptyque boutique um, and I was just testing things and I just felt in love with these two, so I had to together. I really like the presentation, okay, like this is the packaging, okay, so you remove that, that's the sleeve, and then you have the fragrance in here. This one is Eau de Well Eau de Parfum. I already have Eau de Well Eau de Toilette, and I didn't think that I need the Eau de Parfum, but guess what, yes, I do need the Eau de Parfum as well. This perfume has uh, some bourbon vanilla, it has some spices, it has some ambroxan, and it has some rose as well. The original, and the original, the Eau de Toilette, I would describe it as a sweet syrupy vanilla with something citrusy, aromatic. <sighs> this one is the darker sister. Like dark, bold, like super confident, a bit more, like a bit more spicy. I'm not really getting the rose, it's generally like the vanilla is darker, is deeper. Like, oh, I love it. Like, I, I love it so much. If the original, not the original, I keep saying the original. If the eau de toilette, you can wear it like all year round. This one is definitely more fall and winter appropriate. The vanilla is still sweet and like sugary almost but then you, you're getting all of these spices not spices in i don't know in like spices that are gonna tickle your nose not that type of spice i don't like that but it just makes this fragrance darker and like richer and yeah i love it absolutely love it like you have to go to diptyque um usually they're like sold in selfridges and places like that and just try them because the, this, this is stunning this is stunning and it's like beast mode like beast mode it, i sprayed it on my skin and i went shopping and i kept like smelling it I, like i was just walking for like two hours and i could smell it i didn't spray my neck or anything like that I, I sprayed my hand i was like oh my god how is this thing like so powerful because usually when you spray something you have to put your nose close to you no 
I can smell it, okay? And the other one, something a bit different, even for myself, Tamdao. Tamdao, again, Eau de Parfum. I tested the Eau de Toilette. I like the Eau de Toilette, but it, it was just a bit mm, not, not interesting enough. Same packaging, okay? I was like, do I really want this one? But yes, I do really want it. Like, I really wanted this one. So that's why I got it. Tandao. We have some sandalwood, some cedar. We have some amberwood. We have coriander. We have musk. We have vanilla. Um, we have some ginger. Doesn't really smell like the notes would make you think, okay? Tandao. Oh, I love it. I don't get how this perfume doesn't have any incense listed because it's the sandalwood with something dark and a bit aromatic. It's definitely aromatic and definitely has this like almost like incensey vibe to it. Someone said on Fragrantica that this one smells like a temple and I agree with that. I've never been to a temple, okay? but. This is generally how I imagine a temple would smell like. Like people are saying, oh, I went to Thailand and I went to this temple, it smells exactly like Tandao. I've never been there, but I can like, yes, I can, I can see that. Don't think it's super instancy, it's just sandalwood and then something aromatic. It's a scent that you have to, to try, you have to test, you can't blind buy it. But for me, it just puts you in this, I don't know, calming mood. I love it. I just love it. But it's dark. It's deep. It's it's beautiful. In in this different. It's different. I, I I never smelled anything like this. I don't have anything like this in my collection. So yeah, I'm uh, super 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 really happy with this one. Tamdao from the Tick. Because we talked about sandalwood, I actually have two more perfumes that um, are very strong on sandalwood. We have from L'Orchestre Parfa Piano Santal. Um, we look at Sepa Farm. This one was sent to me, and they actually they asked me to pick one fragrance. And I looked at the fragrance and I was like, do I need another rose one? Do I need another? And then I saw this Piano Santal. I was like, ooh, milk and sandalwood. That sounds good. And then I looked on reviews, and some people are saying, oh, the milk uh, smells bad. I was like, mm, I don't like it. And I said, you know what? I, I really, really like sandalwood. Um, milk usually works on my skin. So I should not be afraid. It's stunning. Like you're gonna see some reviews saying that it's absolutely amazing and some reviews saying that mm, the milk is not the best. For me, it's stunning. The milk really works on my skin, okay? So we have Piano Santal. Milk, skin, standardwood, Kashmirian, white mask. Uh, you have some Ambroxan, you have some cedar. It genuinely smells like a powdery sandalwood and then like yes it makes sense skin it makes sense it makes your skin yeah. smell like that and it's a milky sandalwood if you like things like Caban from Yves Saint Laurent yeah. so or maybe uh, this is her from Zadig and Voidel that's that one's like way creamier that one is more like whipped cream this one is milk Oh, it's such, it's like this cold sandalwood, powdery, milky. It's such a beautiful fragrance. And then, obviously, I got this one and I got all of the other samples. And I just felt in love, like in love with the brand. That three other perfumes, I was just like obsessed. Like, I'm going to talk about them in another video, okay? But this brand, like, I was like, okay, fine, yeah, let's try it. Usually, I like sandalwood. No, no, no. It's such a good product, like, amazing, absolutely amazing. Oh, love it. It's not a bismuth, okay? It's not a bismuth and it's not supposed to be a bismuth. Like I'm, I'm like super happy with the way it per performs because I feel like if this would perform, I know, would be stronger, okay? Would project more, it would be a bit annoying. It would be a bit annoying. Like the way it is, it's quite close to the skin. It's not like super, super skin, so I don't think that. But it's, it stays quite close to the skin. I feel like this is the way you should wear this one. And it is just such a beautiful sandalwood fragrance. So we have it here from L'Orchestre Parfa Piano Santal. 
All right, the next one I'm having here, again, it's a fragrance that has sandalwood in it, but it's not all about the sandalwood, okay? I'm talking about BDK Gris Chanel x -ray. When I saw that this one uh, is launching, I was so excited. The day it was launched, I went to Selfridges and tested it. And I didn't buy it right away. I, like, I loved it. Like, like first, like, first love, okay? <sighs> Alright, like I said, I do have another fragrance that features an old sandalwood. It's not necessarily um, a sandalwood fragrance, but you can smell it um, and it's getting pretty popular. It's a new release, BDK Gris Chanel x -ray. Uh I was super excited for this perfume to be released, okay? Uh, actually, the day it was released, I went to Selfridges and I didn't buy it right away. I believe it was like love at first sniff. Okay, like I loved it immediately. There's a box. This time it's coming in a black box. I really like the packaging and I really like the bottle. Like the bottle, it's sexy. Okay, I normally like, like, I'm okay with BDK bottles, but this one is like the best one so far. Gris Chanel X rate. Um, Let's talk about the notes, okay? Uh, we have some cardamom, we have some black tea, we have some fig, some ivory, some vetiver, some sandalwood, we have some vanilla. And the original, it's quite powerful for BDK fragrance. Rouge smoking, passe soir, they don't really perform that well on my skin. Gris Chanel, it was fine. You could smell it, it had like this lasting power. This is beast mode. It's basically like, look at that mist, beautiful mist. The darker sister, again, darker, deeper sister of the original. If you know, um, Gris Chanel, the original is like a cold scent. Is this cardamom, obviously it has, the notes are almost the same, okay? If you're looking at the notes, they're almost the same. But this one is definitely darker and more masculine in my opinion. If Gris Chanel, as soon as you smell it, you can tell that it's unisex, this one leans, in my opinion, a bit masculine. I'm gonna spray the original now. Yeah. In this one, I'm definitely getting more sandalwood. And like, fig is creamy. When in this one, the X-rayed version, the cardamom is very strong and I'm definitely getting that black tea. It's way more masculine this one is creamy almost a bit powdery this one is very very cold i feel like you have to try it even if you like the original because like i said it's quite masculine i really don't mind that usually with i don't like like masculine perfumes but with this one i really don't mind that it's still unisex but leaning more masculine I do really like the original, like I do really like the original. I feel like Gris Chanel, it's easier to wear compared to this one. This is more like your fall, late fall, winter fragrance. But it's beautiful, like it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, it's, it's very dark. It's way darker than the original and more masculine. This is everything I have to say. An absolute beast mode, like beast, beast, beast mode. So, uh, what is it? BDK, Gris Chanel, x Beautiful scent, but you need to try it first. Three more perfumes, all of them are gourmand. So let's start with the chocolate ones. I have from Atelier Materi Cacao Porcelana. I actually bought myself a sample of this perfume because um, I saw it on Instagram and I was like, oh my God, that smells amazing. I love it. And then I spoke with someone that kind of works with the brand and they sent me a bottle. But like I tested it before, I bought the sample and oh, please don't drop it because this thing is expensive. Okay, okay, I'm good. Um, I genuinely don't have any space in here. That is obviously the presentation and that is the bottle. I really like the bottle, like in person. Online, I was like, eh, that's good. But in reality, I really, really like this bottle. Cacao Porcelana is this, in my opinion, Jasmine dipped in cacao and rum. This is what I'm getting. When you first spray it, you're definitely getting like a boozy chocolate, but you can you can definitely smell 
um, some white flowers somewhere in the background. This one has some of the notes like cacao pod, rum, immortel, white tobacco, jasmine. You can definitely smell that it's something floral going on as well. And then when it starts to settle down, you're definitely getting that jasmine, at least in my opinion. Might be the immortel as well, might be the mix between the two of them. But it's getting way more floral so this is not necessarily a full on gourmand it's not necessarily a white flower perfume it's a mix of these two usually i'll be like white flowers and chocolate and rum hmm but it works it generally works i know they have like a discovery kit and oh, i have some coupon codes i have for this one a coupon code i have for um piano santal i have a coupon code i'm gonna leave all of the coupon codes in the description box okay but this one is just, if you like white flowers and if you like gourmands as well, this is like the mix. This is the baby, okay? This is the baby. The opening is delicious, but again, the dry down is getting more floral. So don't expect it to be super gourmand the, the entire time. It's not. It's a mix between white flowers and chocolate. But it's absolutely stunning and smells very, it smells expensive. It smells very um, French, okay? It has that, I don't know, something sophisticated, something luxurious. It has that. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Again, I was planning to buy a bottle, but I kind of received one because I tested it before. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a gorgeous scent. So, Cacao Porcelana from Atelier Materi. Next, we have a full-on gourmand, and that is from Coquilette Joal. Joal? Hmm. Again, chocolate fragrance. Oh. It's so photorealistic. Like, it's so realistic. For me, um, this one doesn't have any boozy notes. But for me, it smells exactly like those dark chocolate um, chocolates that have a liquor inside. I can't remember the name of them. I'm probably going to just put like a picture in here. You can generally smell the alcohol inside. Not alcohol in like perfume alcohol you know no you can smell those chocolates it smells exactly this dark but in the same time super milky chocolate not cacao chocolate and then is that liquor inside it's nothing it doesn't have any boozy notes it has some cacao it has some hazelnut it has some dark chocolate in the dry down it starts to smell like a hot cocoa with some hazelnut, like it's getting sweeter and it's not as dark chocolate anymore, but it's like a full on gourmand. Absolutely delicious. Again, opening, it's, it may be a bit too photorealistic for some people because it generally smells like those chocolates. By just like me, I love chocolate. Okay, I'm like on a chocolate hunt right now. And this is such a beautiful one. It's dark chocolate, but it's creamy. It's milky, so you don't have to worry about that. I know I have a code for this one as well. Again, everything is going to be in the description box. Oh, but it's such, such a good one. I bought in the past, I bought from uh, Coquilete, I bought Sumona, I bought Cookie Crunch. And this one, when I saw the nose, I was like, oh, yes, please, please. I, I need that. I need to try that one. Um, So they were kind enough to send it to me, but... I bought from them in the past and there are some perfumes that I don't really like but then there are the ones that I really really like like when it comes to gourmands they know how to do a gourmand so uh, the I don't know the most realistic chocolate that I've smelled so far and um, is Joal from Coquilete and now let's move on to the last fragrance we have from Soradora Mandol um, with this perfume, actually, I saw lots of people like talking about it and I was like, I want to try it as well. So I asked, can I please have that? Because like, it sounds good. If not, I was about to buy it, but I just asked the question, because why not? And they said yes. So I was like, okay, thank you. I got this one and all of the samples. And actually, before I received the parcel, I was looking at Sebastian, the perfume guy. And he liked this one and two more. These were the ones that he really liked. And when I heard him talking about them, I was like, hmm, those three really sound interesting. And guess what? The ones that I love the most 
is like this one and the other two that he talked about in that video like i really want the other two as well there are some fragrances from the line that were a bit too much they had like a wood one that me and wood we are not the best friends you know but this one <laughs> When I first sprayed it, I was like, this is not exactly like what people are saying it is. Um, but I'm going to explain to you. Okay, I'm going to explain to you exactly what I'm smelling. Bandol has um, some tonka bean, has some uh, suede, it has some heliotrope, it has some rum. When, <laughs> why I sprayed it twice? I can generally smell it from here. When you first spray it, you know how some fragrances are starting light and then they're like getting darker no mandor mandor is not doing that mandor is like boom in your face it's such a powerful scent i don't think it has any almond listed but i'm definitely getting almonds people were saying that this one's a full-on gourmand for me it's not a full-on gourmand because it's not super sweet it's perfectly unisex and i'm definitely getting this creamy almond with some suede normally i don't like leather with suede i'm like mm, you know but it works in this combination it's not a dirty suede is that i don't know like the inside of a black of a bag that type of suede and some people are saying that they're getting cherry i am not getting any cherry like i'm telling you exactly what i'm what i'm getting definitely getting almond a sweet creamy almond the suede is strong but again it doesn't like doesn't make this perfume smell like animalic or like anything like that because some perfumes with like suede later it can smell a bit dirty it's not the case with this one and for some reason i'm getting this like almost like cacao in the background but i'm not getting cherry it might be just my nose because i've heard lots of people getting cherry okay and lots of people are saying that it's like syrupy sweet i'm not getting anything syrupy sweet and I'm glad I'm not because I have so many syrupy sweet vanillas, um, almond perfumes, cherry perfumes. I'm glad this is not that. But it's such a powerful scent. And it generally screams I'm the bee. It generally screams that. This is for night out. This is for winter time. This is like if you want to be seen, you wear this one. If you want to feel like empowered and all of that, you wear this one. It's such like you have to be confident to wear this perfume. Again, it's nothing um, too artistic, too that like people are gonna be like, "Ooh, I'm not sure about it." No, people are gonna like it. Like people are gonna like. You don't have to worry about that thing. But it's definitely not a mainstream fragrance. It's definitely it definitely has a character. This is what I'm, I want to say. I really really like it it's not what people are describing like I'm not getting that like super sweet syrupy I know Greta said this is not just an almond scent and she's right like it's not just an almond scent personally I'm not getting any cherry I'm getting somehow some like chocolate in the background but I'm definitely getting the almond and the suede in this fragrance so the last perfume that we have here it's Mandol from Sora Dora and that was it for today guys that was it oh, I know it was a very long video um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this haul. I hope you're gonna let me know in the comments down below if you ever tested any of these perfumes. Obviously, if you like them, if you don't, and all of that. If you have any other recommendations. And yeah, that was it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to pick thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and like always, I'm gonna see you in my next one. Bye bye.